it's crazy to me how many um, sets don't feed their crew or models. I mean, I just had, um, I interviewed Jules Blue here Mm -hmm. um, before you came along and she was just talking about a set that she was on where they didn't give, they didn't have water. They didn't have water. They didn't have water. And you they had her shooting have, outside. You have to have. Were they in the middle of the desert and didn't s- plan? I don't know. I'm like trying to give them the benefit of the doubt. Like you go to go to the you can buy water at a gas station. Yeah, I don't know. Like you're driving to uh, your shoot and you're like, oh, no, we forgot to get water. Let me pull over to the 7-Eleven and get some bottles of water. Right. Like there's like you have to give people drinking water. I know. It's crazy. But like well, that was one of my – one of the uh, takeaways from my shoot in Barcelona was catering. Mm. It was just – there was a woman there all day long. She didn't really speak English because it was Spain. Yeah. And just like put love into the food. Mm-hmm. Just like the coffee was so good. Mm. I was never addicted to coffee until that shoot. Like I mark that shoot as the point in my life when I became addicted to caffeine <laughs> because the coffee in Spain was so good. And she would just like – you'd go to her and be, and she'd be like, what do you want? And like she'd make you a, a an espresso or a latte or like mm-hmm. whatever you wanted. And there was like always food and they like brought snacks around. There was o- like whatever you wanted was there. And so we really try to do that. And if we're like, if we're having a day that's going longer than 10 hours, mm-hmm. we'll do dinner mm-hmm. or, you know, Carla will bring like tacos mm-hmm. or we'll do, you know, we like, we did churros once. Cause it was like, I knew the people, the, like the food was going to arrive after the vaccine was over and we were wrapped. So we're just like, yeah, bring churros and ice cream. Mm-hmm. Just like really, really try to feed people. Yeah. Feels very, very important to me. Yeah. No, I totally agree. Yeah. Those are like some of my favorite desserts. Yeah. Just like sure. We do. We, you know, we try to make everybody happy. Yeah. Sean is Sean. It's <laughs> <laughs> Sean's personality is just to be disapproving the whole time, but I love him. And but like, we at all the same know time, like deep like, down he's Sean met me when I was 21, mm-hmm. 22. I was 22. And I was a, like, I was a baby performer. Yeah. And Sean respects me as a director. Mm hmm. And did from like like day one when I like day one director when I didn't respect myself as a director, mm-hmm. Sean respected me. So actually, I have a question for you. Have you ever found um, that any difficulty with the way men treat you as a female director? Have you ever struggled? Like had power struggles in that um, way? Only in the I'm not retired as a performer. You mm-hmm. can still book me to do a scene. Mm-hmm. I still do scenes. Mm-hmm. And there are people who, once I started directing, stopped hiring me mm-hmm. because I think I became too intimidating. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's kind of scary directing a director, right? Because you're Yeah, like, and I get it. It's kind of like that imposter syndrome. Yeah, like, oh, they're going like, to know. Oh, they know. Yeah, they know. And they like, know I this totally, is a bad angle. I totally, totally get that. When I, Spiegler likes to tell the story. I was a brand new performer because I I had just graduated from film school. Mm-hmm. I would go on set and I would tell people like, you know, you should put that light over there. It'll look better. <laughs> and like, so picture like a performer who's been in the business for like two months telling you like, you should put your light over there. <laughs> and I actually, Spiegler called me one day and was like, you need to stop doing that. Like you need to stop telling people what to do. But were and you I was right? Like, yeah. <laughs> 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 but like, it didn't matter. That wasn't the point. Yeah. But, like, I was making – like, I was giving people a reason to not hire me again. I was being obnoxious. Yeah. Yeah, people don't like to be told People don't like to be told what to do. Even if they're doing it wrong. Especially – but, but like, it's, you know, by by a a new performer. Yeah. Yeah. Like, when I – when I am directing – I appreciate if a performer would be like, by the way, there's, like, this problem. Mm-hmm. Or like your lens cap is on, <laughs> or like I think your tripod's not level. Yeah, and like stuff like that. I actually very much appreciate because like there's a lot going on, and like if yeah. they notice something is wrong, yeah, that probably means something is wrong. Right. And I'd rather them say something than than me waste time. Right. Yeah. But like I can see how like stereotypical man director and me being you know little twenty two year old baby performer. That that being threatening. Yeah. 
Yeah, so, definitely. so yeah, but like in terms of my crew, my crew, I have always hired people who respect me because mm-hmm. I'm the producer and I get to choose who I hire. <laughs> so like I've never, I've never had a problem with people being disrespectful to me on set. Right, right. That's good. Hey guys, if you want to support my show, then you should think about joining my Patreon. At my Patreon, I offer all kinds of amazing perks in exchange for your financial support. From live streams of my interviews as they are happening, to bonus Q and A's, behind the scenes photos and videos of my shoots, plus cool merch like stickers, mugs, and hoodies, we have you covered. So go to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered, and while you're at it, make sure that you click that subscribe button so you don't miss a single one of my new updates.